Disclaimer, YouTube is notorious for butchering the quality of fast-paced, noisy videos, which is pretty much this game. So I apologize if Crimson Clover is too awesome for YouTube to handle. To alleviate this problem, you could buy it and play it and have the time of your life for yourself. I'm going to start us off by making the bold claim that Japanese indie games should be a bigger market. They could be, fairly easily, but they're not for a few reasons that I'm going to get into later. But I want to start this plea off with just one example of how much potential there is in this often overlooked part of the indie scene. A couple of weeks ago, I started getting requests to cover a shoot 'em up called Crimson Clover, and I was a bit leery at first. You can take one look at that Steam page, and it's not hard to say, oh, it's one of those games. There are bullets everywhere, it's probably some inaccessible, demanding monstrosity of a game that people get really elitist about. I love it when my preconceived notions get proven wrong, because that is the thrill of discovery. As it turns out, my limited experience with Jamestown was more than enough to get me prepped for Crimson Clover, and when I tried it, I was blown away! I had a blast! I was having some of the most fun I've had since Metal Gear Rising or maybe even Jamestown itself, and no one knows about this game. It's so well designed though, it comes off looking like it's gonna be hard as hell, but it gives you a few tricks up your sleeve that make it tough but fair. It blasts a whole bunch of visually busy explosions and wreckage all over the screen, but it sharply contrasts with the graphics that actually matter, which are the bullets you need to dodge. And the trick to these games that makes them a lot less difficult than they look is to just hold down the fire button and not care about what you're shooting. Concentrate on dodging instead. And the developer of this one clearly knew that, since your default bullet spread covers like three quarters of the screen. You're always going to be hitting something, so you don't have to worry that much about what exactly you're aimed at. And the whole thing can be run through in 30 minutes or so, but that's not a bad thing. The real challenge is picking up a difficulty you like and then running through it without continuing once. Otherwise, the game would just be emulating the advantages of being a filthy rich person with unlimited quarters in an arcade. You have unlimited continues, but the penalty for using one is that it resets your score to zero, and pushing yourself to reach the end without letting that happen is the real game. That's what the leaderboard is tracking, after all. Getting good enough to beat that challenge can take days of mastery, but it won't feel like grinding. Believe it or not, conquering something that looks this tough is not a time sink. Since the levels themselves are worth only 30 minutes, it's tightly compressed. You can experience all of its gratifying, rewarding, and terrifying thrills in the time frame of a lunch break. And you'll go back to it again and again and again, chasing after that one credit challenge because it unlocks a very tempting little bit of extra content. I don't know why the quality of this game surprised me so much. The tight, controlled space of an arcade-length scrolling shooter allows the developer to put a lot of attention on the things that really matter, which are satisfying game feel and elegant mechanical interactions. Crimson Clover makes smart use of both. It makes the most of its four buttons. Movement inputs are linked to your radar attack button that bombs enemies within a certain radius. Holding it down throttles your speed, which makes it useful for needling through dense bullet patterns while also giving you a boost in firepower at the same time. It's the main reason why pulling this off is probably a lot more doable than it looks. And pulling off really tight, narrow dodges like that always feels great. You have a screen-clearing bomb that functions more as a defensive move, because it also clears bullets. It's a safety trigger. It gives you another shot at life if you get yourself caught behind bullets. Like that radar button, it's another offensive button that has secondary defensive purposes, and it's meter too. You can't rely on it because there's a damage output requirement for using it that increases every time you use it. But if you hold off and fill that meter up, you can use that meter on a damage amplifier instead. There's this boost mode in the menu that has this brilliant manual adaptive difficulty system that reminds me a whole lot of what I loved about God Hand. It punishes you for using power-ups that you kind of have to use, and it rewards you for essentially handicapping yourself. In boost mode, that damage amplifier is activated automatically and deactivated with the bomb. If you keep it on for intervals over 30 seconds at a time, the game increases the speed and bullet density for the enemy attacks, so you get into this 50 second beat rhythm of empowering and handicapping yourself on and off again as your ship becomes increasingly more useless as you keep using more and more bombs to turn off the damage amp. 
You have a lot to keep track of, and keeping on top of it all rewards you with a very fun, satisfying game experience. It's a well-thought-out tribute to the hypnotic thoughtlessness of a very raw, almost physiologically challenging reflex test. And isn't that the appeal of these classic Japanese arcade games to begin with? I used to think that stuff was going out of style, but then I rediscovered Japanese games all over again. Thanks to some help from a few fans, I was actually able to get in touch with a couple of Japanese indies to ask them what making a game in Japan is like. And what they told me is that it isn't exactly a booming business. It's a much smaller, and in many ways, more isolated scene. Discovering the Japanese indie scene is like watching Jeff Goldblum arrive at Jurassic Park. It's a land that time forgot, where digital distribution hadn't happened yet and arcades never went away. See, Steam has a whole bunch of weird regional restrictions that keep it from being as ubiquitous in Asian markets as it is in America and most of Europe. There are a few Japanese digital distribution websites out there that help these guys get their games around, but nothing quite as big and game-changing as Steam happened. There's no major Japanese language equivalent to Kickstarter either. One of the unique outcomes of that market is the Taito Nesica X Live arcade cabinets that are built for digital distribution. There's an arcade version of Crimson Clover available through that system, but it got its start at Comiket, the comic market. It's a twice-yearly fair event where independent creators sell self-published media, and there are also a few chain stores that specialize in that gray market indie stuff as well. Crimson Clover started out being sold as physical media before a digital release, and then the arcade version happened, and then an international digital release happened, and at some point during that development process there was a free PC demo, and by the way, did I mention these things have demos? They do, that's incredible, and it's been so long I almost forgot what it was like to download a demo. It's been years since I was able to download five different demos of new releases and just spend a weekend with them thoroughly digesting all of them for free. Anyways, what they have set up there is a market where the barrier for entry is a bit higher thanks to its smaller size and the extra expenses and risks that come with printing physical media. But those expenses have been offset by the cheaper price of today's development tools. Panda board. Some of them are really good, but like any other market, most of them are crap. But there are a few standout examples that I never would have given the time of day if I wasn't actively skimming through this. Everyone knows about Cave Story and Reketeer, right? What about Astabreed, Revolver 360, Fortune Summoners, or Gigantic Army? I didn't buy and play through all of these, but I had a hell of a lot of fun with the demos. I posted links below, my favorite's Revolver. The recurring theme here is fun. I hate to rely on anecdotal evidence and that really vague word, but the games I skimmed through all seem to have bright, colorful artwork, upbeat music, and satisfying, snappy gameplay that could all be described as fun. Fun is a concept that most AAAs seem to only recently be rediscovering, but it feels like for these games, it never went away. These games are working within genres and conventions that were at their most popular 10 years ago, but since they're modern indie releases made with today's cheaper tools, some of them have a level of production value that would have been AAA 10 years ago. You know, there are a lot of criticisms to make about Japanese games and how they may be behind the times, but in this case, we have a very similar indie scene that isn't exactly thriving as well, but is still producing quality games nonetheless. Games that are made with tried-and-true methods that strangely do a better job of evoking nostalgia than a lot of ostensibly nostalgic games do. Not because they're trying to remember the past, but rather because they never forgot it. Loading up Crimson Clover and promising myself to do a 1cc run of boost mode made me feel like a kid again. And honestly, these games shouldn't be such a niche market. On the internet, the only real border between us and these games is the language barrier. It is possible for an interest in Japanese indie games to surge, and for us to see more of them in our own languages. So check out the links below and let me know if you find any other interesting games. If a game you end up liking looks like it never did make it overseas, then Google Translate your way to an email address and tell the developer about how you want to see it. I'm holding out for an English release of Revolver 360. It is a goddamn disservice that that game doesn't have a bigger audience.